Valve isn't just magically hoping the Steam Deck is going to be a good system and all of the Linux gaming problems are just going to magically fly away. Valve has been funding various kernel development projects, not just for the past year, but really the past couple of years, for some of the features that they have wanted in the kernel. And one of those projects is by Collabora, that is for Futex 2, which might possibly, maybe, finally make it into mainline Linux. You may have heard about Futex 2 quite a while ago, because this has been a project for about mm, a year or so now. I may have done a video on it back then, but I don't remember if I did. Over time, they've gone back to the drawing board, sort of like tried out different features they might want to add, slimming it down, and they've slimmed it down basically to the core thing they need to make Futex 2 actually do something useful. At this point, the one thing that Futex 2 is going to be doing is adding in one new system call, that being Futex Wait. This has a well-defined use case and has been in testing for quite a few months at this point. But to understand what Futex 2 actually is doing, we first need a bit of background knowledge in how threading actually works. Most of us probably know what a thread is at this point. A thread is basically a way to tell a CPU to do some task when it doesn't have a CPU core that can be dedicated to it. Basically, it's a way to make, I guess, a virtualized CPU core. But for many operations that can occur, it can be very dangerous to have two threads operating on the same bit of data at the exact same time. So let's say we have two threads. So the first thread reads an integer, that integer is set to the value 10 for example. The second thread also reads the same integer, but then goes and modifies the value to be 15. So the first thread still thinks the value is set to 10, but the second thread has set it to 15. So that second thread now goes and sets the integer to the value 15, but then the first thread goes and sets the value back again to 10. So this has basically negated all the work the second thread has done. So how do we go and address this? Well, one way is with a system known as a mutex, which is a mutually exclusive lock. Basically, when one thread is accessing a bit of data, it then locks that data, so that thread is the only one that's allowed to access it. And the lock will be lifted when that thread is no longer using that data. And the way the waiting threads know if the lock has been opened is they're going to use polling. Basically, they're going to say to the lock, hey, are you open? Are you open? Are you open? Are you open? Are you done? 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 done. I want to work, work. Let me work. Let me work. Let me work. And they're going to keep doing that until the lock has been opened. This has some obvious overhead. There are operations that are taking place. But there is another bit of overhead that is maybe a bit more subtle, and that is whether this is happening in the user space or the kernel space. Basically, the user space is where all your general user applications are running, like your text editor, browser, things like that. And then kernel space is where the kernel is, the drivers are, and things of that nature. Now, if everything is taking place in the user space, there is an overhead, but it's not that bad. But when the CPU has to switch between the user space and the kernel space, it has to do a thing known as context switching, and this has a much, much larger overhead, and that needs to be done every single time the polling needs to be done. This is where the original version of Futex, otherwise known as Fast User Space Mutex, actually comes in. This is intended to reduce the amount of context switching between the app and the kernel, and how do we do this? Well, we reduce the amount of system calls that need to actually be done. So rather than using a polling system, let's have a queue system. So when no thread is waiting on a resource, whatever thread wants to use it, can go and use it perfectly fine like you'd see happen in a single threaded application. But when there are multiple threads that want to access something, rather than all of those threads then sitting there just polling for the resource, they're going to be added into a queue managed by the kernel. Then once that resource is free, the kernel's gonna say, yo, the resource is free, jump on it, everyone else get back in the queue. Those threads that are waiting in the queue, rather than sitting around wasting CPU cycles, are going to be put to sleep by the kernel, and the kernel is going to be responsible for actually waking them up. 
So this takes us into Futex 2, which is an extension of the original Futex implementation. And in this case, it doesn't have to be like this. Futex 2 is going to be reusing a lot of the original Futex code. In the current Futex system, a thread can only wait on a single resource. But a very common pattern to see in games is a thread wanting to wait on multiple things at the exact same time. It doesn't matter, you know, which of them open up first. It wants to do one of those operations. This is what Futex 2 allows you to do. So you can actually be in the queue for multiple resources at the exact same time. The reason why this pattern can exist is because on Windows, this function has been available for quite a while through wait for multiple objects. And I would be very surprised if on the current generation of consoles, it's not also available in some manner because they are very heavily focused around multiple CPU cores. You guys can have a discussion amongst yourselves about whether this is a good system or whether the way it's being done on Linux is better and shouldn't be changed, but this is the way that games are designed and this is sort of what we have to work with. The main intention of Futex 2 is to improve performance of translation layers like Proton, which is obviously a very, very heavy push for things like the Steam Deck. It'll reduce CPU load with more efficient CPU usage and hopefully also improve CPU latencies as well. This isn't just going to affect translation layers though, native games and native game engines are likely to benefit from it as well, because if you're designing something for Windows as well, you're obviously gonna wanna make use of the Windows features and being able to make use of those over on Linux as well, just makes sense. Now I can blather on all day about what it actually is, but it doesn't matter what it is, if what you see in the real world doesn't actually matter really. And I wish it was a very simple, oh, your FPS will improve by 5%, by 10%, but it's really not that simple. In some games that aren't heavily threaded and aren't heavily, you know, waiting on these locks, the difference is basically negligible. It's not a decrease, but there's not really a measurable difference. Other games you'll see a consistent, but still not great, like one or two FPS improvement, whereas other really CPU bound and really heavily threaded games might see a much larger improvement. But FPS isn't really the improvement you're going with because most games don't have CPU bottlenecks. It's more about reducing general CPU load. Now, Futex 2 by itself isn't enough to really do anything at all. You actually need software that makes use of Futex 2. So in the case of these translation layers, you need a version of Proton or a version of Wine that is designed around working with Futex 2. Now, currently, I believe only Proton Experimental works with the current version of Futex 2. There have been different iterations over time, but for the latest version, I believe it's the latest version of Experimental. When it comes to Wine though, it's very unlikely that mainline Wine is going to actually support it, at least anytime soon, because it's not available on macOS, so it makes Wine much harder to port over to that system. However, there is a custom version of Wine called Wine TKG, which does actually support it. And obviously you need a kernel that also supports Futex 2. You can always go down the route of doing the custom kernel and applying the patches yourself, but currently, Linux TKG does have the patches applied, and on the mainline release candidates, it is actually available. Now, just because Futex 2 is available in the release candidates for 5.16 does not mean it's ultimately going to be there in the stable release. The reason why we have release candidates is because things might actually change. But being there in the release candidates does mean it's very likely that it is finally going to be in the actual stable version. Even though the performance boost isn't going to be some radical game change, any level of performance boost is going to be a good thing. If you make a 1% improvement every single day, something something inspirational speaker on YouTube. And on a system like the Steam Deck, you want to get as much performance out of that as is physically possible. So let me know in the comment section down below, do you care about Futex 2? Do you run the existing F-Sync patch? Or maybe you just don't care about gaming altogether. 
let me know down below. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Sonic Barapay, link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or six YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.